Hi, Dom, the BCBA mom, and welcome back to my channel. Okay, let's get right into today's video. I've just been thinking, as behavior analysts, as BCBAs, we possess so many skills. Like, we literally have the skill set and the power to change behavior in almost any environment that we enter, any environment that we undergo. So why is it so hard for us to change our own environment? And because we can predict and control behavior, we would be perfect people, right? I don't know about you, but I'm not perfect. There are still some things about me, some behaviors about me that I want to change. And it had me thinking like, well, why haven't I changed these behaviors in the past? I know exactly what I need to do in order to change everybody else's behavior. Why haven't I changed my own behavior? All of our behavior is controlled by our motivations. This is why we can know all of the steps that we need to perform in order to work out more, increase our study, stop smoking, stop drinking, spending more time with our family. Whatever behavior that you're trying to change, we know what to do, but will we do it? It's our ability versus our motivation. We have the ability to really carve out a bomb treatment plan for ourselves, but are we motivated to do that? And are there other confounding or extraneous variables in our environment that are out of our control that'll make that behavior less likely to happen? We are going to get into that right now. So here are strategies to change our own behavior. So the first tip I have for you is to watch your words. So this is not really behavior analytic in nature, but when you think about our words, they are so powerful when it comes to behavior change. This is why verbal praise is such a very salient reinforcer or verbal reprimand is a very salient punisher for some behaviors. So that's the same with our words. If we are constantly going through life saying what we can't do, what's not attainable, what, what is too difficult, what is too far, what is too heavy, our, then our behavior will start to match the words that are coming out of our mouths. Even in behavior analysis, if I'm writing a treatment plan, I'm instructing the parent to say less of what you don't want to see and say more of what you want to see. So if we are reinforcing a behavior, doing an extinction procedure, differential reinforcement, we are speaking into existence the things that we like to see more of. Hey, Johnny, great job finishing problem number seven. Hey, husband, I loved how you washed the dishes after we ate dinner. Hey, son, I really like how you cleaned your room before I even had to ask. So the more we talk, the more it reinforces our behavior in the future. We can use that same tactic when it is time to target our own behavior. Start speaking more of the things that you want to see more of. Noticing when you're making those small successive approximations towards your terminal behavior or your terminal goal. If your terminal goal is to drink more water, Anytime you grab a bottle of water, you can say, all right, girl, you're on the right track. You are drinking that water versus when you're grab a bottle of water. Oh my gosh, I hate water. I'm never going to finish that. Watch your words because your behaviors can follow that. I was listening to a sermon by, I believe his name is Stephen Frederick. And um, he said that don't say anything unless you can say, and that's exactly how it should be right after it. So when you think about it like that, all of the times that we speak negatively about ourselves, man, I'm broke and that's exactly how it should be. I'm never gonna pass this exam and that's exactly how it should be. So when you think of it like that, it sounds pretty silly. You would never wish those things on yourself. You would never affirm those things in your life. Same with the way you talk about your own self and your own behavior change and the goals that you're working on. If you can't say those words after it, you probably shouldn't be saying those words. So just find ways to speak life into the things you want to see more of and say less about the things that you want to see less of. Number two, you want to break composite skills down into component skills. Or look at this as like a shaping procedure. 
we want to reinforce successive approximations towards the terminal behavior. So what that can look like is I have a goal to stop gossiping, right? That's a big one. If I have a goal to stop gossiping, it may be too big of a goal to say, all right, I'm not going to gossip. I'm not going to say anything negative about anyone else for as long as I live. You may want to pray, break that down into a smaller step. That way you can contact that reinforcement more frequently. So a more attainable goal is, hey, I'm going out to lunch with my girlfriend. I am not going to say anything negative about anyone else for the entire lunch. Once the lunch is up, I can go call my sister on the phone and spill all the tea. But at least I met that goal once that day. You can break bigger goals down into smaller goals. If you're trying to quit cursing, then you can say, hey, I'm not going to curse today. You have a goal that you want to spend more time with your family. You can break that down and say, I will spend one uninterrupted hour with my family. And then we can fade that goal into something with a higher criterion. If you have a study goal where you are trying to minimize distractions, you may say, I will read one hour of Cooper without checking my social media. It's, it's, it's very hard to say, hey, I will put my phone in jail. I will, I will not check social media and I'm only going to study for the next 24 hours. You may want to break it down hour by hour. They even have apps that will help you focus for a short period of time and then access a break. So breaking those big, big steps into smaller steps so they are, they are easier to attain, you contact reinforcement more frequently, and then, that, then you can start increasing or raising that criterion. Number three, you, whether you're trying to increase a behavior or cut out a behavior. If you are trying to decrease a behavior, make that behavior a very high response effort in order to access. So I remember when I was in graduate school, we all had a project on how to implement a behavior intervention plan for our own behavior. We were self-monitoring and changing our own behavior. And I think I chose something simple, like how to increase my steps per day, something like that. But someone um, had a really interesting project where they were trying to decrease the amount of cigarettes that, that they smoked in one day. So if you are trying to do something like decrease the amount of cigarettes, decrease the amount of cups of coffee that you, that you drink in one day, one thing you can do is make the cigarettes very hard to get to. So one thing you can do, especially if you're like here in Chicago, it's really cold, leave the cigarettes outside in the car in the cold. So anytime you want to smoke a cigarette, you have to put on your coat, put on your boots, go outside, shiver, shiver, shiver in the cold. And then another way that you can make the re that response even more difficult is don't leave a lighter in the car with it. So that means you actually have to start up the car, go to the store, get a lighter in order to access that cigarette. By then, then you'll be thinking, is it really worth it? Probably not. On the flip side, you also want to make the habit that you want to replace it with more attainable or with a less response effort. So let's say you want to cut out on cigarettes, but you want to increase on yoga. You have your yoga mat readily available. You have it in plain sight. It's always there. You may want to have your candles already lit to kind of set up your yoga environment, have your yoga playlist, have your, your yoga clothes on. Um, making that replacement behavior way more easy to access than that behavior that we want to see less of. If you can think of any other examples on how you can make a habit or a behavior that you want to decrease, how can you increase the response effort or make that behavior really, really, really hard to do? If you can think of any other examples, please comment below. Say you are trying to decrease your um, engagement on social media where you're in the phone, you're just like, you know, glued to the screen. Something incompatible with checking your phone on the screen for me is flossing my teeth. Uh, especially with braces, I have to floss my teeth so frequently. And sometimes I find myself mad, like, Ugh, I have to do this. I can't check my phone. But that is a really great incompatible behavior because when I'm flossing my teeth, I'm using my hands. I'm usually looking at what I'm doing. So I can't really do 
whatever it is that I want to do on my phone. Also, flossing my teeth is a behavior that I'm targeting to increase. So it just helps that it goes hand in hand, that your behavior for decrease and your behavior for increase should kind of be incompatible with each other. So the next thing you want to do is assign a contingency manager. This is somebody that is going to hold you accountable. So, okay, <laughs> truth moment. There are some goals that I'm working on that I don't tell my husband about. Because if I told my husband, he would definitely hold me accountable. If I told my husband that I'm not trying to drink coffee anymore, anytime he sees me with a cup of coffee, he'll be like, now you know and he'll just kind of throw a lot of shade and just make the environment really really aversive until i put the coffee down that helps we need a contingency manager we don't need anybody who's going to make us feel bad about the progress we're making but we need somebody that is going to hold us accountable other ways to hold yourself accountable or get a contingency manager is share the goals that you're working on with other people hold yourself to a timeline so for example if you say hey i want to you know produce this massive training this training is going to change the game of aba this training is going to be mind blowing in order to hold yourself accountable to deliver on that training set the date select the event bright event already Send it out to people, market it, share it with your colleagues that you shared it with everyone. And now that everyone is registering for your event, that in itself is going to hold you accountable to meet that goal. Um, another way that you can hold yourself accountable, like let's, for example, if you're studying for your BCBA exam and you keep pushing back the date and you push it back and you say, oh, I'm going to take it this time or that time. One way to hold yourself accountable is the modules that you buy or that you purchase, you only have them for a certain amount of time. So once they're out, that can hold you accountable to actually taking the test during that time. Or go ahead and schedule your test and you scheduling that test or paying that money will also help to hold you accountable to your goal at your timeline. Another thing you can do like I'm telling you, like it's endless, but no, seriously. Another thing you can do is implement a response cost procedure. Anytime that you engage in that target behavior that you want to see less of, you have to pay your kids $20 or you have to cash out your girlfriend $40 or $300, whichever is going to be the most aversive to you to punish that behavior. You have to pay a fine or a fee every time you engage in that behavior. So the final tip that I have on ways to change your own behavior is gratitude. You may feel like you are always looking to meet a goal. Um, it's really important to be grateful or acknowledge where you are right now. So we all have things that we have accomplished, that we have nailed, that we are great at, which lets us know that we are successful with changing our behavior and meeting goals and accomplishing. Like we are successful. We do have that skill set. And sometimes you just have to take the moment and realize like I am a badass. I am a rock star. I am great at this. I am great at that. So you want to really take the time out to acknowledge what you are already great at. I know for me, sometimes I second guess myself as a wife, as a mother, as a therapist, as an entrepreneur, as a supervisor. There are so many things that I, I have goals in almost every area of my life, but it really helps to stop and think about like, oh, I am really great in that area already. I am really great. And it just allows me to see like, where am I now? I've been reading this book, Badass Habits. kind of elicited my response to produce this video because everything that they were saying in the book, I've said it in previous videos. I've written it in behavior plans. I've talked about it with colleagues. It's all behavior analytic in nature. So why can't behavior analysts change our own behavior? We can. Um, so one of the major things that I got from the book is the three T. Things take time. We are making great progress so far, but don't beat yourself up if you don't meet the goal in the time that you had set. Things take time. We know sometimes behavior change can happen so rapidly. We have the skills in order to get a really quick result. 
But when some things take time. When you are thinking about breaking generational illnesses, generational debt, generational mindsets, or generational curses, some of us are the first in our family to have this goal on our list. Some of us are the first in our family to try to do this or to try to do that. So things take time. So that is all that I have for you today. Hopefully this is right in time for you to make a New Year's resolution if that's what you want to do or to just emerge some of your skill sets in 2021. Oh my gosh, it's almost 2021. Do not forget to subscribe, hit that like button, so you get notified on when I upload new videos because it just keeps getting better, guys. Um, I love you, have a happy holidays, and I will see you in the new year.